Gusmer Enterprises is proud to be the North American representative for Christian Hansen. This video will provide you with important information on how to conduct a proper rehydration and reactivation of active dry yeast before inoculating the grape juice. The most common commercial yeast products are manufactured as so-called active dry yeast, derived from the fact that live yeast cells have been propagated, concentrated, extruded, and then spray dried to provide longer shelf life. The yeast cells are still alive but not ready for metabolic activity. In order to prepare the yeast cell for alcoholic fermentation of grape juice, special care needs to be taken in order for the cells to revive and be ready for starting their metabolic engine. Each individual cell needs to be carefully rehydrated and then reactivated before being put to work in the grape juice. If not, the cells will either be damaged or die. Failing to comply with the recommended rehydration and reactivation protocol can cause problems with sluggish or even stock fermentation and allow indigenous yeast and bacteria to grow and cause spoilage. You might not be aware of the fact that different commercial yeast vendors recommend different ways to prepare the active dry yeast before inoculation into the grape juice. It is therefore very important to follow the instruction on the yeast package or the product information sheet accompanying the product. Some vendors recommend rehydration temperatures between 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 77 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and others at 100.4 to 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The biggest risk of not following the procedure is that the temperature is not optimal for rehydration and reactivation. There's also a risk that the yeast is not allowed sufficient time to rehydrate, that is being soaked in the water before getting reactivated by adding grape juice. Now demonstrate three different Christian Hansen yeast products to show the optimal rehydration and reactivation according to instruction of use. However, we have also prepared an experiment where the rehydration and reactivation temperature is significantly higher than recommended. Your three best friends will be a thermometer, a clean yeast bucket and your instruction for use. For safety reason, do not use a glass thermometer and definitely not a glass thermometer with mercury. Get an industrial approved thermometer that can withstand the winery work conditions. Now, bring out your yeast package from the refrigerator. Read the instruction carefully, either on the back side of the yeast pouch or in the product information sheet. Fill the yeast bucket with clean water, preferably non-chlorinated water. Heat to recommended rehydration temperature by adding clean hot water, preferably pre-boiled from a tea kettle. Cut the bag open with scissors. Wipe the top of the bag and the scissors with 70% ethanol for sanitation. In this demonstration we have weighed out 50 grams or 0.11 pounds of yeast and added it into 450 ml or 0.1 gallons of water. According to Christian Hansen's recommendations, add the yeast from the bag into the water in a ratio of 1 to 10 yeast to water in a circular motion to ensure as much initial contact of yeast to the water surface. Let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes until no or little visible sign of dry yeast is present. Don't stir the mixture.
now a vast majority of the yeast cells have been rehydrated and are now ready to propagate. For this purpose the cells need fuel, which is the sugar from the grape juice. Again pay attention to the instruction for use. According to Christian Hansen's recommendation, add unsulfured grape juice into the rehydrated yeast solution in a ratio of 1 to 3 juiced to yeast slurry at the recommended reactivation temperature, not too cold. In our demonstration we add 168 ml or 0.044 gallons of grape juice. Stir the yeast slurry gently with a clean spoon to bring the remaining yeast into solution. Let the mixture rest for 20 minutes. Now observe the yeast solution during the reactivation step. When small visible bubbles emerge on the surface of the yeast bucket, you know that the yeast is starting to metabolize the sugar and the suspension is ready to be transferred to the tank. Pour the yeast suspension on the top of the tank or pump it into the tank depending on your standard operation procedures. In case your grape juice is cold or you want to add your prepared yeast slurry to a cold soak tank, the yeast cells need to be acclimatized. Add enough juice to the yeast suspension to lower the temperature by 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Let mixture acclimatize for 5 minutes. Repeat until the temperature of the yeast suspension is less than 15 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the must or juice to be inoculated. The reason for going through this somewhat tedious procedure of rehydration and reactivation of the yeast is to ensure as many live and well adapted cells as possible to conduct the alcoholic fermentation. Each yeast species have a temperature range that support growth. Exceeding the maximum growth temperature causes the yeast cells to heat stress and the high temperature will eventually claim their life. The number of dead yeast cells is correlated to the time exposing the cell to the elevated temperature. That eventually will result in no living yeast cells in your yeast suspension. Our experiments show that rehydration for 30 minutes and reactivation for 20 minutes at the elevated temperature of 113 degrees Fahrenheit did affect the viability of the total number of yeast cells for all three yeast products. Viniflor Merit, a Saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast strain, lost 25% viability at 113 degrees Fahrenheit compared to the optimal temperature of 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Viniflora Prelude, a Torlaspora de Brickia yeast strain, also lost 25% of the viability at 113 degrees Fahrenheit compared to its optimal temperature of 72.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Viniflora Concerto, 
a Lacansia thermal tolerance yeast strain lost 12% viability at a 113 degrees Fahrenheit compared to the optimal temperature of 72.5 degrees Fahrenheit. For more information, go to gusmerenterprises.com. Click on the Find a Rep on the main menu bar, then choose the industry you're interested in and enter your city and state. The technical sales manager in your region will then be selected. Gusmer Enterprises, service with knowledge since 1924.